What industry is a lot shadier than it seems? My dad knows a story from someone who works for a nationwide grocery chain. They have to deal with an Italian mafia to import balsamic vine gar. More businesses than you think have to deal with mafiosis and gangsters. I once helped the gang relations person with Habitat for Humanity get reassurance that their volunteers would be protected in an American inner city. They apparently always speak with the gangs beforehand for safety reasons. The maritime industry. Most of the big companies do things by the book and treat crews well because they are afraid of lawsuits and unions, but many smaller mom and pop companies break laws and violate safety regulations with reckless abandon because they are not as visible and can stay under the radar so to speak. It's very common for a small company to ask a captain slash crew to do something illegal and dangerous in order to increase profit and for the captain slash crew to comply out of fear of losing their jobs. And that's just the US maritime industry. Sailors from poorer nations who work on ships are often fed little more than rice and cheap ramen for months at a time and paid pennies for their back breaking work. I love running tugs for a living, but the industry as a whole is rife with shady business. IDK if it falls under maritime, but I took one look at the job listing for a cruise ship and now I tell all my co-workers to never take a job with one. In the stager and theater technician, I make decent money fresh out of college dollar sign 18 dash 24 an hour depending on venue even without joining the union, because I do specialized work. Looked into a lighting tech spot on a cruise ship, and it'd be getting minimum wage working 50 hours and 7 days a week. Wifi on board, costs money out of my paycheck, it'd be in charge of passenger safety off hours, if an alarm goes off, and we have to get people on to rescue rafts, it'd have a room in a small bunk, and all my wages would go directly into a ship, debit card so I could give my income straight back to the company to eat. Something about living and working on a boat in the middle of the ocean seems to make employers think they don't have to actually care for their employees. I can imagine working on a boat that ice and filled with people on vacation would be even worse. Dietary supplements it's gotten better, but there's still a lot of half-truths and whole lies. Not all that long ago it was seriously like the wild wild west. Eyeglasses. You have no idea the snow job they put most people through when it comes to buying them. It's far, far worse than trying to buy a new car from a dealership. Wholesale frames are about $5-20, wholesale lens blanks are another $10. Any kind of dip coating of, tinting, etc is negligible cost and effort to apply, literally pennies. To top it off, they don't even do a whole lot in house, but send it to labs which are basically sweet shops, that can take up to 2-3 to three weeks when labor time is literally under 5 minutes. Instead of training real opticians and technicians, fear just glorified sales staff now. Most of the time they don't even bother with proper measurement for PD, frame width, or arm fitting. Was an optician in the early 90s. I'm horrified at what the business has become. Rating services like Yelp. Refuse to advertise, and your good reviews magically get rearranged. Hey, look if you want to do that and be transparent, I get it. But most every business owner knows how scummy this is, and most clients just have no idea. I have a business that isn't something that would usually be looked for on Yelp. They called and I just froze. Luckily I do long term rentals, and was sold out. Explained I wouldn't have an opening for months, they seemed to leave me alone. Yet they have my business on the front page of Google search under the wrong category. Recruitment industry some examples. Fake jobs to lure candidates for registration piss trainee negotiation tactics of telling a candidate there is a better candidate who wants less, so we recommend less for you to get the job. Especially for contractors. Backquote coveting off pitching and telling a candidate they have been sent to a line manager, but in reality they haven't been submitted, because two others from same recruiter have already been in interviews. If they fail you may get a chance. Lot of coded ways to put on a database info on your age, non-professional related appearance, and ethnicity ageism, sexism, racism is rampant in hiring. A lot more dodgy stuff behind the scenes source was involved with the industry on a global level for over 15 years before I changed careers. Trucking. The margins are razor thin, and so everyone is trying to nickel and dime each other constantly. 
the drivers lie to their dispatchers, the dispatchers lie to the brokers, the brokers lie to the clients. All of this for like dollar sign 50 dash 100 sometimes. I worked in trucking, and the head Raladi for our distribution center was skimming payroll, shorting the checks of the lowest people on the totem pole, then getting cash infusions to petty cash from corporate to return part of the theft as an emergency tied over until the employee's next check, then claiming the rest of the theft as an overage on the next payroll report I'm probably missing a step in her chain, but I'm not an accountant. It was a scam she managed to work for a couple of years due to a lack of oversight during nationwide management shifts. When she finally got caught, rather than take the bad publicity, the company just let her leave. The last I heard she was working in the same position in an adjacent industry, but still involving transportation. Cest larvae. Cruise ships. I was told I was having a minimum of one day off every week and work normal hours 8, 10 h slash day with a good pay and good prepaid tips. I ended up working 30 days in a row, all over 400 hours, for $1,600 with tips included. This company I was working for was called Scenic Cruises ship was called Manuscript Scenic Crystal, which was an Australian company working over a Swiss company going under a Maltese flag, sailing in Central Europe. That's how I understood it anyways, they deliberately did this, so they could break international laws, I counted at least 5 that they broke. Biggest scam company I ever worked for. I resigned after my first month. The police boarded the ship every once in a while, because they knew this, but they couldn't do shoot, because they had no jurisdiction over the ship. I was forced to work with a 39 celsius fever. I really wanna frick this company up, but I literally have no idea how. And hiring an international lawyer, or whatever is too expensive. Edit, if anyone knows how please contact me. Pet industry. Basement puppy nils and dogs that are so inbred they can hardly breath. There are plenty of ethical breeders out there and some unlicensed breeders are ethical, even if in a legal grey zone. But the conditions of some of the so called puppy mills can be really bad. Sometimes when breeds are mixed, and the pup gets the recessive genes the breeders weren't looking for, they straight up euthanize it, because they know it won't sell. Not to mention how many purebreds are actually not pure at all. And sold as is. Shady. Avocado farms. Most of the farms in Central America are taken over by the cartel, because of how much money is in selling avocados. CBD. Lot of predatory companies making sub for products with questionable raw materials, and then marking it way the frick up, and selling it as a miracle cure to vulnerable and ill-educated consumers. Usually have a high power legal team on deck, but pay their workers shoot and no benefits. Edit, because so many people are asking, while I used to be in sales in the industry, and have my own opinions about who's good out there it's a woefully short list, you'll probably have your best luck checking out the top recommendations at r slash cbd, they have a whole pinned post about best companies, that they've hopefully vetted well. I wear. Luke Sotica owns a large majority of eyewear and holds a virtual monopoly on the market. They control all prices, and will crush competition. The only reason eyeglasses and sunglasses are so expensive is because of price gouging. As a chef slash owner, I would say delivery services like Grubhub. They take 30% of the sale leaving the restaurant with basically $0 in profit. And their customer support is a joke. It's like they hate us. FCK them. Never again. Not an industry, but higher academia is badly brock some of the smartest people are some of the most badly exploited. Old tenured professors limit the number of faculty many departments can have, forcing people to work as postdocs forever, effectively doing all the work the prof should be doing in the first place. Meager pay and long hours, plus constant pressure, makes postdocs some of the most depressed people. The grad students are no better either. A lot of the times grad students don't complain about ill treatment, harassment and outright bullying as they don't want to jeopardize their prospects of graduating. If you're a foreigner, this situation becomes even worse, whether you have a grad student or a postdoctoral researcher. Scholarly journals. The actual research is usually paid for by the government. When it isn't paid for by the government, it's paid for by a foundation or in pharmaceuticals by a corporation, that is developing a drug. The people who vet the research are all paid by their respective universities. All the journal does is distribute it. 
yet they charge way more per page than anyone else who just distributes other people's writing. Dog boarding slash daycare and at shady in the Mayfair sense, but you'd be surprised at some of the places I've worked at. Aggressive dogs don't get kicked out, very dishonest about what goes on behind the scenes, not enough staff to care for the number of dogs. My co-workers at my current job have had the same experience as well. We were all very happy to find a place that actually treats the dogs as the hash one priority. Most people are just in it for the money which is funny cause there isn't much money in the dog industry. Shipping industry, with major corporations such as Walmart being one of the biggest contributors to selling stolen goods. Sometimes trucks go missing, or sometimes trucks leave earlier than the established time of departure, and never arrive to their destinations. Let's say you have a Walmart appointment for 9am, for a 2000 carton order. It would take at least 2 hours to load all that, but once the loading is done, the truck driver needs to wait until confirmation is given in written form. Well, Walmart truck drivers vanish halfway through the loading and never return. Now, Walmart has about a 1000 boxes not accounted for, plus no confirmation whatsoever that these 1000 boxes were part of that 2000 carton order, so they treat them like a bonus. So far, only Ups, FedEx and Fred Mir are the only companies that keep a close count and send back anything that wasn't in their original order. Heck, Fred Mir sends the entire order back just for a single mislabeled box. Lol. These three guys are the good guys from what little I've seen, but Walmart. Jesus, sometimes, boxes get labeled as being something entirely different, in order to bypass special qualifications or restrictions. For example, about the time, when Corona Chan started going crazy, we had to label toys and board games as groceries for a huge Walmart order that took about a week and a half to properly label and ship. It was a nightmare and pretty much every employee aside from the administrative staff, was disgusted and pissed. The plastic industry. They focus on telling the individual to recycle as a way to address slash fix the global trash crisis. The real focus should be on companies that mass produce plastic and label it as recyclable, but recycling companies cannot actually recycle the materials. It costs too much to recycle certain materials and no one is willing to buy them. The non-profit world, unfortunately, most people at the top are in it to make a name for themselves and don't usually care about the mission of the organization. The last company I worked for was a small non-profit helping the homeless, and they did care and did a lot of good work, but the old CEO retired and the new one the board brought on was more interested in her own ego than anything. Fast forward 2 years from that point. 10 out of an original staff of 35 were let go in the span of 2 months, including me. Several programs had to be scaled back or stopped entirely. The organization came under direct auditing scrutiny from local and state government for questionable financial choices the CEO made like using funds to travel by air what would normally be a 2 hour drive, repeatedly. And that CEO then resigned because of the hostile work environment created by the city. Another org a friend works for has come under fire for its CEO firing anyone that disagreed with her, especially when they stood up to her making potentially illegal decisions. And that's far from an isolated story. There's a lot of good people in the lower levels, but the C-level execs of these companies are sometimes crazy. Seriously? The funeral business preys on people's weakest moments to convince them to buy ridiculously unnecessary stuff. I used to work as a mechanic, and I damn well know some things they overcharge the customer for way too much. One time a girl came into my shop maybe late 20s you could tell she had no idea about cars. Well there was some snow the last few weeks, and she brought her car in, because her roof concaved in on top, where the snow sat so now there's a bowl like spot on her car roof. So she asked us if we could somehow fix it so my manager came up told her hell take a look so she goes and sits in the lobby area. My manager opens the car door and looks at the roof for 3 seconds before slamming his fist up into the roof of the car pushing the collapsed roof back to normal he kept the car in the shop for an hour and spent maybe 10 minutes rubbing the dents out he charged her $700 for a good bunch. Glad I'm not in that industry anymore. Mental health facilities. 
A lot of people trust today's mental health facilities, but from my experience they're quite flawed. Staff can be judgmental and condescending and downright cruel. A family member of mine was institutionalized for a while, I say with full certainty she was healthier before she went in than coming out. The places I've seen are most definitely for profit. They had no intentions of having her fixed and released. Also, sloppy. She was given the wrong people's med several times. She was also prescribed dangerous combinations that wound up having her sent to the ER. Really stupid mistakes were made over and over. The tire business. Tires are a scam and shouldn't cost anywhere near what they do. Everyone along the supply chain is making bank. It's one of the industries I would love to see disrupted. Seriously, gentlemen's club Zaka strip clubs. I worked as a bouncer slash DJ for many years in a couple clubs and there is a lot going on in the background that is shady as hell. Not only from the dancers but also bartenders, bouncers, management, owners, etc. Politics. Like however shady you think it is, I promise you it's shadier. I think it's at least as shady as the first few seasons of House or Cards. I don't know if it's as shady as the last few. But I guarantee there are many bills written that the politicians don't give a shoot about. But they do it to get a W. And I have no doubt that they trade votes and call on favors to get things passed. My favorite part of that show was when Frank was the whip. That was the most enlightening part of the show by far. I think a lot of the rest of it was sensationalized. That being said we pretty much know for a fact that our current federal government is essentially being plundered by the wealthy for financial gain. And there are people in power who are deliberately working against the welfare of Americans just to make themselves and their friends richer. Defense Contract Manufacturing When I worked in that field it was like a time capsule to 70s stereotypes. Beer for lunch, whiskey in the desk drawer, everyone freaking everyone, and the best seats at the biggest games for decision makers. Rent to own they prey on the poor, and you pay way more than what the item is actually worth let alone selling for. Health insurance. In the commercials it is all about caring for your health and stuff. But if you ever get a serious illness, they will do anything to avoid paying for your treatment. Source, my mother got breast cancer and her health insurance made a business decision to let her die rather than pay the $40,000 for her treatment. They made that decision then hired lawyers to make it happen. My mom got to fight them in court while going through chemo. She made it by mortgaging the house. She told me the insurance company caused her more stress than the prospect of dying. The wedding industry at least in the US. The whole point of the wedding industry is to trick people into overspending by preying on their desire to have the perfect wedding. So you have to have multiple photo shoots, a beautiful venue, excellent catering, an expensive dress slash suit, etc, all at an exorbitant price. It's a scam. A lot of traditional wedding staples like the white dress, service performed by minister, etc are based on actual traditions and beliefs, but those traditions don't mean anything anymore and now are sold as traditional to squeeze more money out of you. Tell me, why would you ever need 1000 photographs each of your engagement, your first look, the ceremony, the bridal party, etc. How many of the 50 good ones are you going to actually look at, and will mean anything? Maybe a handful. The rest just get dumped on social media, and forgotten in a few months. I'm not saying, that you shouldn't take pictures at your wedding. You should. But there's no reason to spend thousands to take pictures of contrived setups, like the first look. I've been to and been in a number of weddings of my friends and have seen the ludicrously overpriced things the planners convinced them to buy into. And that's just the financial side. That's not even getting into the insanity that is planning the damn thing. Trying to get families on board and compromise their demands is a whole other shady industry. The alcohol industry. In some countries most competing companies use the same distilleries, equipment, and ingredients. This includes the higher end premium spirits. All the marketing is basically look how young you are, and how much fun you'll have, and completely ignores the demographics who buy it, or does anything to stop them. I'm fairly certain at least one of the major companies is cooking their books at this point. Nestle. 
they use child labor, steal the fresh water reserves from small villages in South Africa promising to give them better access to it then privatize it, and attempt to sell it back to them as bottled water at a price they can't afford. Not to mention I believe they used some water sources rural villages needed for drinking water, and used it to pump their wastewater into, then hide behind their lawyers, to let them get away with it. Higher education. It's a lot of nearly scamming kids into going to specific schools, and not properly preparing them for the cost, and in most cases overwhelming debt. $900 textbooks, $750 digital codes for a few lines of text or tests, books that change one sentence per edition, change yet require new books, etc, etc. Not everyone can be a doctor, or psychologist, or teacher, or, yet schools will pump out hundreds a year for a single profession, and keep telling others, that the demand will be there then you'll have the assholes calling people names for going for worthless degrees, because somehow that's helpful. Then you have asshole frequents touting, how they worked 10 jobs working 340 hours a week, while doing full time school, taking care of 16 kids, a wife with cancer, solving world hunger, and curing cancer, and they still got straight as, and a job paying $400,000 out of school. If they can do it then you're just a lazy friker if you can't. Shit like that. I'm more comfortable than anyone in my shooty redneck drug addict piece of crap family has probably ever be despite. That I still understand and recognize the plight of others less fortunate than me. The whole thing is a depressing racket. Meat industry. The factories are straight up disgusting. Not hygienic and they break. So many regulations it's ridiculous. But OFC when an inspection comes everything is in order. Vape juice. I used did some work for a company that used to wholesale to a whole lot of smaller vape shops. The places that sold to us ranged from vape juice laboratories to guys making it in bathtubs. I actually quit vaping seeing some of the conditions the juice is made in. Bonus, one of the guys making it in his bathtub had to excuse himself because he needed to move his stuff as his mum wanted to use the bath. People are messed up. Fishing industry. As a new manufacturer up against brands well known for manufacturing in China for generations, I found that from the highest up to the lowest down, they present an offer to make more money together, and time after time after time, it doesn't pan out as presented. I stop my business. In about a year, I might give it another shot, but times will be much different. However, those businesses have generations of success killing the competition. I'm pretty sure I'm no match for them due to Sorry. I have actual values. It'll get financially killed again. But hey, if you like to fish, I make a really good fishing line cutter. We can do commerce in a better way.